Yvette Walker here at the LA Convention Center about to dive into the latest in automotive technology and green innovation. Stay posted, we have a lot to show you. Very exciting stuff. Yvette Walker here with Ryan of 67 Charge Cars. When I saw this car exhibit, I immediately recognized the iconic Mustang body. Please talk a little bit about what you have today for us. Yeah, so our, our company is Charge Cars and this is the 67. So it's based on the, the iconic design of the, of the 67 Fastback, but it's a brand new car. It's not a resto mod, it's not a Dynacorn shell brand new steel shell with uh, carbon fiber doors, fenders, hood trunk to try and, try and keep the weight down. So we got all wheel drive, four electric EV motors with 535 horsepower and 1120 foot pounds of torque. Oh my goodness. So we got plenty to play with. Um, 525 horsepower, what is the weight of this car? So just under two tons at the moment and um, with the battery weights and um, but yeah we're working on, on getting that even lower if we can oh my goodness um, so yeah we've, we've kept the, the sort of synonymous features of of a 67 mustang with the rear triples here um, and you know this the elegant sort of design the whole body shell has been resurfaced as well um, and any imperfections and joints and that we've really worked on and um, so this is this is still one of our prototype vehicles but we'll be going into production um, in the fourth quarter of 2023 is when the first uh, customer vehicles will be delivered. So you're taking orders today? For we are, we are, we are, yeah. And okay. those, those slots are filling up pretty quick. Uh, okay. We've had a lot of interest. So we just debuted this car at the Peterson Museum a couple of weeks ago. I love the body style. I love the iconic silhouette and sleek lines of the Mustang. Just gorgeous. Fabulous Ford Mustang, uh, you know, homage to uh, on behalf of 67 charge cars. And so, how long do these charges last? And how do you um, allow consumers to uh, purchase um, systems to charge their vehicles? So, we're, um, we run CCS charging for this car. Uh, we can do 50 kilowatts um, DC and 22 kilowatts AC. Um, the mileage at the moment is around 200 miles quoted, um, but we're still working on the software to sort of uh, develop that as the battery technology moves on. Wonderful. And so what can someone expect to pay for one of these beautiful EV67 charge cars? So as, as it's very bespoke and hand-built, um, we're only making 499 of them as well. Delivered to the US is around 450 US dollars, and that includes the shipping minus any taxes to pay. But purchasing one of these cars, you know, your, your neighbor's not going to have one, you're going to be the only person on the street that has one of these cars um, and you're having an iconic shape but with the reliability of an electric car you know you're not going to have oil leaks and fuel leaks. It's about having having an iconic car but not having the maintenance and the upkeep of it when you know you just want to go out for a quick drive. Oh I love it, I love it. So thank you so much for spending this time with us. So excited. I'm going to have to put in my order. So Alright, Yvette Walker here at the Lexus Explore exhibit with David. Thank you so much for making the time to talk to us about this new 2022 LC500 convertible. My pleasure. Welcome to Lexus. So this is our flagship luxury coupe. chance to go to a dealership and actually drive this baby because you will not be disappointed. <laughs> I heard it's got a very throaty, strong roar under yes. the hood yes. and that's all because of the V8. Correct, yes. Uh, the sound, as I mentioned, is part of that exhilaration. The love of driving is really at the heart of what Lexus loves to develop. Um, Akio Toyota is himself a professional driver and so the passion of driving still is woven into the experience our guests have. 
I love it. And so tell us a little bit about this design because I noticed that it is a coupe, but it's kind of a larger coupe, a roomier coupe, a, a you know, obviously a very fast and powerful one. Sure. Um, but I love that it's a convertible as well. Please talk about its position in the market in relation to other convertibles. So this is called a uh, luxury touring coupe. So it's not trying to be a pure sports car. It is a luxury experience that definitely has performance capabilities. In fact, the coupe version of this we include at our Lexus Performance Driving School. That's part of the experience that you have where you can actually race the track in the coupe version. So performance capabilities are definitely integral to the DNA, but the luxury part of the experience is what you get first. So it has a multiple personality experience and you can see that here on your drive select mode. So the comfort really tones down both the sound of the engine, but also how it shifts. If you want a sportier feel, you put it in sport or sport plus mode and it'll type, tighten up the suspension. You get more of that sport feel and handling. So right. if you're looking for a Sunday afternoon stroll and cruise, it can do that. If you want a sportier feel, it can deliver that as well. So it gives you the option to drive it the way you want to drive it. I love it. And so are these available today? Do we have to be put on a waiting list? How available are these beautiful cars? So that's going to be a very local question. So dealer inventory levels are going to be different across the country as well as their allocation. Um, so I always encourage a guest to talk to the dealer in your area uh, because how they handle their business is going to be unique to them. Right. Um, so I definitely can't answer for them, uh, but we are still producing these. So okay. that should encourage some people. Now you're talking about it is a coupe, it is a larger coupe. Um, when it comes to a coupe, you know, storage is important and this is a convertible. And so the top goes up or down in 15 seconds at 30 miles an hour or less. You do not have to stop to pull over to put the top up and down. The controls are right here at your fingertip. So it really allows you the versatility of, um, if you put the windows up, you eliminate a lot more air. If you put it down, you get a little bit more circulation. enjoy the sound of your Mark Levinson sound system, not the road noise. Right. Obviously, if you enjoy the sound of the V8, put it in Sport Plus, you get more of that. Right. But it gives you the control to still enjoy a quiet ride, which is a Lexus signature. Um, so you get a chance to sort of get a seat for the back seat configuration. People are like, could people sit there? Technically, yes. Um, I don't need all of the inches available to me in the front, so I could move up. But right now, let's say we went shopping. We would put our shopping right. bags back here. We don't want them at our feet. Stuff. You can right. put your purse there or your dog right. or, you know, your kids, whatever. <laughs> so it is functional. Can we demonstrate how the top goes up? To Listen, in fact, the way that it functions was inspired by Japanese calligraphy. Oh, um, it lifts it lifts up really beautifully. The top comes over really beautifully. And then the top comes down. So it's like a three movement stroke. Oh, lovely. It's really, really and elegant. it's hard design. top, it sounds like. It's not. It's a soft top. Oh, it's a soft top. And part of that has to do with the balance of weight. So you want a performance vehicle to maintain maintain a balance of weight that keeps the performance consistent. So whether top is up or down, your weight stays consistent. Um, and a hard top typically gets stored in the trunk. Right. And so that loses the access to trunk, trunk storage space, things like that. So with the soft top storing not in the trunk, you always have access to the trunk space. So if your golf clubs need a place to fit, they always fit no matter whether you want to put the top up or down. Beautiful. Well, I'm really going to be asking Santa for one of these mm -hmm. in my, uh, you know, stocking this year because it's the perfect color. This is infrared. Infrared, yes. And if you have a stocking that fits this, I want to see that stocking. <laughs> All right. I'll let you know, David. Thank okay. you so much for your time. You're welcome. And Merry Christmas. Thank you. Merry Christmas to you. Look at this. I am at the LA Convention Center enjoying just these remarkable gems of the LA show, the LA Auto Show that is. We find Motional, which is a driverless automotive system. And to talk to this new technology, let's bring in Akshay. Akshay, please describe to us what it is we're seeing here today. Yeah, this is the Motional Ionic 5 autonomous vehicle. It's really the convergence of two cutting edge technologies with electrification and autonomy. So what you see here is a baseline Ionic 5, which is integrated with key technology. Uh, Motional is a 50-50 joint venture with Hyundai. So we work very closely with them to integrate all the key sensors. There's 30 total sensors on this car, including a combination of radar, LiDAR, and cameras, like you see all around the car. 
And that is remarkable. And so you mentioned that this technology right now is available in Las Vegas, and you recently announced that you were bringing it here to Los Angeles. That's right. Please talk about your track record and how many millions of miles you've had without at-fault incidents. Right, we've offered over, we've driven over 2 million miles without any at-fault incidents and offered over 100,000 passenger rides. That is remarkable. And so what do people say about their experience in a, basically a driverless vehicle, an autonomous vehicle that's taking them from point A to point B without, you know, them having to even look up and, you know, away from their phone while they're working or typing or, you know, making those phone calls. Yeah, we've seen a lot of excitement a little bit of anxiety initially when you get into the car, when you sit in and you see the steering wheel moving on its own and no one's doing anything, uh, that's a little spooky to some. But within a couple minutes, it becomes very mundane. So you suddenly realize people ease up and they even forget that this is a self-driving car. Oh so it's goodness. really interesting to see that transition. Oh, that's beautiful. So when can we expect to see the first cars land and drive around our beautiful Southern California roads here? Yeah, we are live in Vegas with Lyft, so you can actually hail a ride and it's available on the Lyft platform to take you down from a casino to the other on the Strip. Uh, we just announced that we are now expanding that partnership and LA is going to be our next market. Uh, stay tuned for when that's going to be. Oh my goodness, that is so exciting. So you heard it here. Watch out for Motional when they're going to come and bring, uh, you know, partner up with Lyft and bring your food too because I understand you're doing a partnership with Uber Eats as well. Right, we are live on the Uber Eats platform. We launched in May of this year. Uh, we are offering deliveries with certain merchants in the Santa Monica area where you can actually order food like you do today on Uber Eats and you may get matched to a driverless vehicle to bring your food. Now is there a specific place where people can go to especially request one of your emotional vehicles? Uh, it's not specific. It really depends on which mode of transportation fits your needs best. And if, if you're in the vicinity, you could get matched to a, a robot taxi. Oh my goodness, how exciting. So we all better watch out for these beautiful driverless emotional vehicles on our Southern California streets, everybody. Hi, I'm Yvette Walker. I'm here at the Toyota exhibit with my friend, Thomas. Thomas is Hello. here today and he's going to be giving us the rundown for the new 2023 Prius. And when we say it's new, just wait to hear what is new about it. So Thomas, we're looking at the new 2023 Prius and from our initial conversation, you're telling me this is not an evolution of the original Prius, but a completely new, re-engineered and reimagined Prius. Correct. Please talk a little bit about Correct. that. Correct. Hybrid Reborn is what we're calling the car. So it is completely new from the ground up. There's no carryover from the current generation into this new generation. Um, we really focused on appealing to a new audience, a new, we want to bring in a younger buyer, introduce them to the Prius brand. Additionally, the vehicle has a new streamlined design. So it's two inches lower overall height. It's one inch longer and it's one inch wider. We've also increased the horsepower from 121 horsepower on the, on the current generation to 194 horsepower on the front wheel drive version. Wow. And we do have all wheel drive available on all grades on the Prius and that will have 196 horsepower. Beautiful, can we step in and Absolutely. continue Please our be conversation? My guest. I'll Wonderful. move over to the passenger seat. Alrighty, okay. thank you, I'll meet you there. Wow, it's so beautiful in here. Very clean and open design um, with a beautiful dashboard. Look at how far that goes. Uh, please talk about the ergonomics designed into this new 2023 yes. Toyota Prius. One of our main focuses was to improve the overall cabin experience um, and also with the ergonomic side of it. So as you notice as you're sitting and if you look forward, Everything is in sight line. As you look, it's minimal eye movement from where your, your instrument cluster is to your audio system. You'll have minimal hand movement from the steering wheel to the controls here. Everything is, is just to keep you Very focused, streamlined. Yeah, focused on the road. Uh, while the vehicle is two inches shorter overall in, in height, the, the way with the new uh, platform design that we're on, you're actually sitting two inches lower than the current generation as oh, well. Okay. So there's ample headroom in the front seats for a larger size passenger. Uh, we're certainly sitting into the, the limited grade here, which is our, our top of the line version that we have. 
Uh, one of the other little neat features I'd like to point out is that we can't see it because the electricity's off, but there's an LED strip here. This LED strip carries around here, carries around to the side. This is linked to the Toyota Safety Sense system. Under certain circumstances, such as when you're sitting at a traffic light and you may not be focused on what's happening ahead of you and a car begins to lead, mm -hmm. it'll actually blink and tell oh, you, hey, wow. try and get your attention, right, let you know that right. it's time, time to move. Oh, very nice. So it's a, it's a built-in system that's going to alert you as to, you know, what's happening around you. Correct, correct. Safety is a key uh, component in every Toyota vehicle. It's a big focus. We take our Toyota Safety Sense system, which is a package of, of, of safety features, and make it standard on every vehicle that we, we make. So it doesn't matter if it's the lowest grade to the highest grade, all Toyota Safety Sense uh, features are standard. This vehicle here will have our new uh, Toyota Safety Sense 3.0, uh, which is our most up-to-date, most recent uh, package of safety systems. Beautiful. So what are the different options of this car as we go into 2023, and what are the price ranges that we're looking at? Well, pricing hasn't been released. That'll come sooner and closer to retail. We do offer the vehicle in three grades. We're going to start with an LE grade, which is the base grade. That will actually have fabric interior. Then we're going to bump up to the XL, or XLE grade, which is one below this. And then that'll be the mid-tier grade. We'll have the limited grade as we're sitting in here with the upgraded soft tech heated and ventilated front seats. Uh, the the mid-tier grade will also have soft tech seats, but they're not heated and ventilated as, as they are here as well. Um, outside of options, we do have a limited number of options available. However, once again, we're going to continue and share those as it becomes closer to retail at this point. Beautiful. And so what is the feedback that you've received so far? I know it's media day, but what are some of the, the feelings and uh, reactions you've had in response to the new Prius? Overwhel overwhelmingly positive. People uh, have really been open and honest about, about the vehicle. A few of my favorite quotes were, uh, somebody had said, uh, Prius has finally grown up. That was a comment I got oh, last wow. night at the reveal. And I had, I was standing here off to the side today listening, two other journalists walk up and the one said, OMG, and the other one said, amazing. And I turned to them and I said, of course, I love to hear that. <laughs> of course. So of we're, course. we're very excited about the vehicle. Beautiful. So when can we expect to see it on the lots at dealerships next year? Uh, so for the Prius, we don't have an exact date, but we're saying January. Okay. For the Prius Prime, the plug-in version, uh, springtime. Beautiful. That's the best I can do. And so what is the driving range of this one? So this particular vehicle, the my MPG is on the LE front wheel drive version is 57 combined. We're not uh, providing the individuals at this point. So that's a bump up of three miles per hour, or three miles per gallon over the current generation as well. Alrighty, well this is a beautiful vehicle. I love seeing brand new reimagined technology, yeah. especially for Toyota. Thank you so much for sharing that with us today. Thomas. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure speaking with you. Alrighty, thank All you. Right. You know, we've been walking by this car and we're trying to figure out what is it? Is it a Jaguar? Is it a Thunderbird? Right, that's you know? what I thought it was. I thought it was a Thunderbird. It looked like a Thunderbird to me, but we were surprised to learn that it is a classic. They call it the Cosmo, one of those 70s cars that, you know, didn't make it big back in the day, but it was revolutionary. And why was it revolutionary? because of the rotary engine, and that's what allowed the technology to take off. Well, you know, that's what makes this show so exciting. Not only her being with me to talk about these things, but I'm gonna let her walk around the car and let her see some of the classic old stuff that, you know, gave cars back in the day life. But today we've been very, very surprised with the new, uh, taking hints from the old with body styles. Yeah. And now uh, this one as the inspiration for what you know, we have a, today. What they call a mash, no, I don't know if they call it now mash, because everything's mashed up yes. nowadays. They're, you know, they're taking bits and pieces from things. But I'm gonna follow you, and you tell Let's me what you think about this car, because you know, we can talk about all of it, but tell me, Describe the car to people because uh, you thought it was a Thunderbird and why did you think it was a Thunderbird? I thought it was a Thunderbird just based on the silhouette and so the Thunderbirds that I have become familiar with growing up are you know two door sporty coupes with either a hard top or a rag top a convertible style and very very similar to this however um, the the Thunderbirds in this body style were more um, on the time of the 60s, I would have to say. And so this, again, is the 72 Mazda with just a beautiful sleek. Wait, 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 hold that thought. You said it was a what? 
It is a Mazda. Can you believe it? I was surprised. Well, who knew back in the day <laughs> Mazda made these cars? And you know, that was the Asian influence coming in with tiny cars. And people would say, why do I want a tiny car? It's America. We want big cars, metal cars, heavy cars. And gasoline was cheap back in the day, 25 cents at the most. Uh, I'd hate to say what it is in your neighborhood. Yes, we don't want to talk about that today. We don't want to talk about the cost of gas, which is why the electric vehicles are so popular today. But as you look around, you can see the classic, you know, the chrome finish, especially in the bumper. Um, just the details of chrome along the, the windows. It looks like it even has a cranking, uh, yes, a cranking window mechanism to pull the window up and down just wait, like wait, wait. we remember. Air conditioning by pulling the window <laughs> up? Well, you know. That's how you get the air conditioning, right? That's how they did it. But no, just you can move the window up and down. And this version actually has a right side driver. So, no way, yes, a right side driver. Look at this. So, All right. Just like in the movies, you know, yes. a lot of, if you look at the old movies in the 60s and 70s, uh, they're all about these right side drivers trying to figure out, wait, where are they at? You know, that, that aspect, but uh, you know, see if you can open the door. Let's, see, oh, let's yeah, see. Yeah. Okay. You got the key? No. Okay. Try, try it. Oh, harder. I'm afraid this Push is the a button. classic. Push the button. Yeah. Oh, we look got at door that. open. We, we got, got a it door open. open. We have access to right, so Look at that. Look at this. And you see, uh, oh, it's, this is a manual transmission with the emergency brake right there at the ready. Um, it looks like some form of maybe windshield wiper um, knob there. And you can see the dashboard. It looks very much like an aviation dashboard if you're looking at it, all the gauges and Well, yeah, everything. the engineers back in the day were very, you know, functional and structural. So it yes. wasn't, it was all about form, you know, straight lines and, you know, as as mass production as we can get it but you know we're talking about beautiful cars a question for you how did you learn how to drive on a four stick because people are, what's that people have <laughs> no clue what a what a four or a five is as compared to now you just put it in drive and people are just actually having fun <laughs> with it because they don't get to do anything how did you learn so I initially started to learn on a stick shift and then went into automatic, of course, because I do live in California and, you know, bumper to bumper traffic is not very conducive to a stick, at least not the way they used to make it today. And my understanding is that today it's a lot more smooth, a lot more functional and a lot more um, friendly for the driver. So, I mean, I see this car and I'm thinking James Bond 007, right? And I'm so impressed and surprised to see it's a Mazda. It's gorgeous. Well, you know, come in at the picture. So then, well, now that you've seen the car, well, you get to see the wonderful Yvette Walker Bracon. <laughs> I guess that's how you say it. That's yes. Correct? Yvette Bracon Walker, yes. All right. So that's a guy for you. <laughs> huh? I know it's in there. But, uh, you know, if you want to hear more about her every day or once a week, tell them where you're at. All right, so you can find me on ABC News affiliate Southern California Business Report on KMET 1490 AM, 98.1 FM, and KMET TV every Tuesday from 4 to 5. So do not miss it. You can stream it, you can hear it terrestrially, and you can pick it up on YouTube as well. So you have all the options, just like in a car, you know, A, B, and C. Right now we're seeing some beautiful prototypes, and you think, wow, I hope I get to see that in my lifetime. But you know, that's what makes this country so beautiful that, you know, people like Yvette, come in here, that uh, that make this, you know, and actually ladies like her demand, you know, something new, something fresh, something that really appeals to me because, you know, like you said earlier, it felt like a glove, right? You, yes, you said that. it did. It felt like a glove sitting in that cabin, in the seat. Um, just the design, the ergonomics of it all is very, um, it's just very fitting and it does feel like a glove. It feels like it was designed for you. You can tell the thought and um, just the attention to detail that went into the designs. And so it's very great to And if you find that. yourself in a Lexus in a red, infrared <laughs> Lexus. Infrared, yes. Infrared, and you need somebody to go down the coast and hear that big rumble, you know, you actually have three <laughs> options for it to rumble. You could have the, the low version, the Wait, what's that noise? And then it's like, I'm here version, right? Right. So they have the sports package, the comfort package, and the luxury package. So you can, um, you know, drive it in any of those three settings for the driving experience you're looking for at the time, which is great. So, you know, it's pretty much a, a beautiful day if you get a chance to come out this weekend here at the Alley Convention Center because uh, it's the Alley Auto Show, the last one of the year. And get to, you know, kind of touch it and feel it and as press, but get to sit in it. And because of, you know, you can't turn them on and 
uh, you know, for safety reasons, electricity and gasoline, uh, they don't mix in a building like this. And especially when you have a lot of cars, uh, you know, where if they were filled with gasoline, it just makes a potential danger. That's why you don't get to do a lot of the things, but just the feel of it, you know, the feel that it's something new coming down the road. So with that, we'd like to leave you in mind that, uh, you know, you might think about an upgrade and uh, enjoy life a little bit more better because uh, as a guy, I'm just looking at, wow, these are nice. They just, it's nice to just sit in luxury and enjoy a ride. It, technology for us older people, well, you know, cruise <laughs> mode, cruise. Yes. And for the younger mode, <laughs> oh, you know, when you're on the move, you're on the move and you want to feel that car grip that road. But, you know, and it's just in time for Christmas. So I hope everyone out there is filling out, you know, Santa's list. I already requested one of those Lexus convertibles in my stocking for Christmas. We shall see. But well, in there any it event. Is. Stocking stuffer. <laughs> well, you know, 100 grand. Winning the lottery, the billion, that's, I could buy five, every color there is, but uh, we'll leave you with those thoughts at the Alley Auto Show. Her name is Yvette Bracone Walker on ABC. Go ahead, finish the rest. ABC News and Talks, Southern California Business Report every Tuesday from four to five. Don't miss it. And I'm the Latino Cyber Guy, you know, just getting to travel all around the country and bringing you some exciting moments of what life is in the USA. Back to you in the studio. Hello everyone, Yvette Walker here with president of the Hispanic Motor Press, Ricardo. He's going to talk to us a little bit about the recent awards in six categories for cars that we are looking at here today. Please share with us some of those categories. Well, first of all, thank you very much for giving us the opportunity. That, and it's always exciting when we have to present an award because yes. what that means, means that we have to test vehicles through the whole year, we have our procedures, and then little by little, some vehicles we find that are a little better than others. And we have been doing this for 13 years now, and the quality of the automobiles today is so good that our job becomes so difficult because <laughs> how can you distinguish? Right, you know? But yeah. still, uh, we are looking at design details, we're looking at the mechanicals, we're looking at the fuel consumption, we're looking at the environmentally, how friendly they are, and also, most important, is the technology integration within the car. Because today, cars are really technology on wheels. Yes. And I think that's what everybody wants today. People are not thinking anymore, it's like, oh, I want to have the fastest car, you know, no. I want technology. I want to be connected. Yes. So that's uh, a, a big part on, on, on the cars today. Um, LA Auto Show, one of the most important yes. auto shows in the world. We're so happy to be here, to have space, and to be able to present the awards right here. Uh, that is something that manufacturers really appreciate. And like every year, some, we make some people very happy. <laughs> and someone's that they said, a little oh, how it was better, you know, but. <laughs> of course. So let's start across the six categories that we have here. Yes. I see the best electric vehicle car went to the Kia EV6. Tell us a little bit about the Kia EV6 and how they every, were able to edge. Every car manufacturer uh, by law in California must have uh, or present an electric vehicle in order to sell uh, industrial combustion engines. Okay. So pretty much every manufacturer has something in the work that is coming out. Now, electric vehicles, is this an, an, a vehicle for everyone? Not yet. Why? Because we still don't have the infrastructure. Once we have that, then we have a lot more options. But for those that commute, you know, 20, 30, 40 miles, 50 miles a day, even 100 miles a day, the electric car of today is capable of doing that. You just need to make sure that you have the infrastructure either at home, at work, or somewhere when you can make fast charging work right. for you. Right, and one of the things that I noticed here at the show was that um, there were vendors that were looking to bundle infrastructure packages along yes. with the EV vehicles, which allows for solar panels to be sold alongside the vehicles as well as batteries and stations to dock their vehicles and then bundle those at, with the purchase of their vehicle as well. We, we are in a transition period, right? So we are moving towards the electric car, but I don't think that that's going to be the only solution for our transportation needs because right. it's not the same to move one person in a vehicle from downtown LA to San Monica that take a truck from downtown LA full of tomatoes going to the Vallarta market in Santa Monica. That's a different 
completely different right. from moving good. Yes. So the dynamics, you know, everything is different. So I think there's a lot of technologies like fuel cell technology. It's come a long way. And I think there might be other ones that we still don't know. Yeah. Something that is happening within the EV market is that we see new companies. Now we know that pretty soon the Apple car is going to come out. Sony is already making a car. Oh my These goodness. are companies that you would never think of, oh, you know, making cars, right. TVs. No, but <laughs> Sony is already making. So we have been fast from uh, Vietnam presenting their electric vehicle. So I think that's why I think it's, it's an interesting period in history because there's a lot of changes coming and we still can't, you know, we don't know how it's going to be 25 years from now. But today we did the testing for a whole year and we're very confident that if you're looking for an electric vehicle, the Kia EV6 is probably one of the best, if not the best, you know, I mean, we think it's the best, but sometimes we design, you know, some right. people like a little bit of design different, but uh, some there are some very, very good options like the Hyundai Ioniq uh, 5. Again, there are many, many choices. The other car that I was thinking about is the Kona uh, electric. So. There are a lot of options today. We just need to make sure that before you buy one, an electric car, you need to think of, do you have the infrastructure around it to make sure that you can charge the car at home? And then again, how much you're gonna use it? How, how are you gonna use the car? Definitely for long travel, I cannot recommend a, a, an electric vehicle. <laughs> right, so. so no cross country traveling no. with an electric vehicle. That will, I mean, you can do it, but... <laughs> Plan out the remember. plan out the charging stations ahead that's of time, right? right? That's right, that's right. <laughs> and so I see another area is the um, technology uh, yes. award went to the GM Super Cruise driver assistance feature. This well, there's a, every manufacturer has a lot of technology to assist the driver to make sure that they don't get into accidents. I mean, we already have automatic braking, right, meaning the yes. car will stop by itself it <laughs> before hitting something, right? Uh, General Motors created this pro uh, this system that is called uh, Super Cruise. And the Super Cruise is almost, almost completely autonomous drive. Oh, wow. You can, once you're in the freeway, you can press the button and the vehicle will stay at the speed. It will even pass vehicles that are slower. It will change lanes. It will adjust the speed, you know, oh. faster or slower. I mean, really, it's as close as an out of pilot you can think of. Oh, my goodness. Yes, it's, it sounds like it incorporates some AI technology in there yes, through yes. the sensors. Yes, yes, it, and again, we can spend hours talking about all the technologies yes. involved with that, but I think for the consumer, what is important to know is that, look, this works, actually. You can get, let's say, if you're going from Los Angeles to Las Vegas, you can get on the 15th freeway or the 10th freeway, set up your cruise, super cruise, and you don't have to do anything until you arrive in Vegas. Oh my goodness, <laughs> I'm gonna have to take a test drive just to test that theory. But the next category we're looking at for best compact city car looks like Hyundai Kona took the prize on that. Uh, the reason is when we're looking for an urban car, uh, you know, a city car, means what? People you, that don't go too far, and they need a vehicle to go to work, right? And then if you're just commuting to go to work and back, it's pretty much only one person in the vehicle, so you don't need the big size. Uh, but the Kona line, it offers you, you still have an internal combustion engine, there is a hybrid version, and you have an electric. So pretty much all bases are covered. Uh, it's very complex, very high uh, ranking on safety, very good uh, driver assistance system as well, uh, and it's proven to be very, very reliable. So those are the things that I think are important. It's something you can get in, use the vehicle, and you don't have to worry about maintenance or anything for this a long time. Oh, that's beautiful. So the next on the category is the truck, right? The truck of the year is the most difficult of all the tests that we do because America is about trucks. Yes. <laughs> I mean, the number one, number two, number three vehicles are big trucks. So either Ford, Chevrolet, or Ram, and at some point Toyota with the Tundra are in a category that is unique to the United States. And they really know what they're doing. They really know that segment. So it's very difficult every time to choose, okay, which one is better. But the Chevy, the Chevrolet Silverado won this year in part because it incorporates the Super Cruise technology that we just talked about. Oh my goodness. That is amazing. So what is the next one, the luxury, luxury segment? Luxury, another is segment that is very, very difficult because what is luxury? 
you know, for everyone might be something different. But when you get into an automobile, you close that door and you're surrounded by high quality materials and you can feel and see the craftsmanship. Yes. You know, you go, wow, this is real wood, not fake. I mean, and the details of how the leather has been stitched around the ignition button and you see the trains, you go like, wow, this is really taking you to another place. And this is with Grand Wagoneer is something totally unexpected from the Jeep. Yes, from Jeep that comes out with one of the most luxurious interiors in the market and has everyone <laughs> talking about and everyone that gets in that vehicle, they go like, what? <laughs> I cannot believe that this company was able to create this, which in not just in my eyes, but in many, many journalists around the world has been a surprise because it's definitely better than a Land Rover. Oh my goodness. Well, now I need to go see this Jeep Wagoneer because I just cannot wait to see, you know, something as rugged as Jeep being awarded the best in luxury. So that is remarkable. And the next one is... Um, the SUV. Yes, it's the SUV. The Sport Utility Vehicle. Yes. So and what's the next category? That's the Sport Utility Vehicle. Yes. And what is an SUV? You know, Sport Utility Vehicle. Well, I think it has become the family part, really. <laughs> right? Because you still need the space but you don't want something that is too big, but still you need room, especially for the Hispanic family that we tend to have more kids, right? And we, you know, the, the grandparents uh, are coming along on trips. So you want, you know, third, you know, uh, row That's seating, right. <laughs> but you also, you want all the safety items, you know, the driver assistant. That's very, very important. So um, the award went to the Kia Telluride. Very tough competition in that sector. Beautiful. Well, Ricardo, thank you so much for being here and for recognizing and testing <laughs> and coming to those very difficult conclusions and finally, you know, offering those awards on behalf of the Hispanic Motor Press. And so for everyone out there, if you want to learn more about these vehicles and the awards and why they were given these awards, go to HispanicMotorPress.org and That's there right. you will learn all about this year's winners. Thank you very much. Alrighty, thank you so much. Back to the studio.